Hello and welcome to Dad Rail. I'm Richard Evans and this is Train Driver Vlog number nine. The day I went the wrong way. Before we jump into this video, as always, I just want to say that all the views and opinions expressed within this video are purely my own and may not reflect those of any companies I may be employed by or associated with. And furthermore, location names and people names may have been changed to preserve confidentiality. Secondly, on a personal level, I just want to say a massive thank you um, to all my new subscribers. I'm up to nearly 1,600 people now, which is absolutely amazing. So if you do like this video, please do go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It really does help out what I'm doing. I make about 20p a week from doing YouTube videos, so I'm doing it um, purely for the love and enjoyment of doing it. So yeah, if you do enjoy this video, hit the like button and subscribe. It really does help me out. So the day I went the wrong way. Did you even know trains could go the wrong way? Well, I can assure you they absolutely can. On that sort of subject of trains going the wrong way, one of the questions I get asked um, more often than you'd, uh, you'd think, believe it or not, is whether or not trains have got a steering wheel in them. The answer is, of course, no. Trains do not have steering wheels. But I can kind of see um, where, where the logic comes from with that. A lot of old um, locomotives and units did have a steering wheel-like object in the cab. But it wasn't a steering wheel. It was, in fact, the handbrake. And if you've got kids and you watch Peppa Pig, and if you've got kids, I'm sure you probably have to endure Peppa Pig. There is an episode of Peppa Pig with Miss Rabbit driving a train with a steering wheel. So that's very much keeping that myth alive. I will post a link in the description if you want to watch that uh, clip of Peppa Pig. I was going to pop it in this video, but YouTube would probably take away my, um, my five pence that I'm going to earn from doing this. So uh, yeah, if you want to see that, check out the link in the description below. So if you think back to my previous vlog, where I spoke a little bit about uh, route knowledge, you'll know that as train drivers, we have to have a very thorough knowledge of the routes that we drive over. You have to know the locations and names of all the stations, you have to know the speed limits, you have to know the names of the lines, and you have to know all the signals. One of the things that I didn't touch on with signals, and one of the most important things about signals, is where each signal can take you, what lines it can take you down. Certain signals, especially located near junctions, either have a theatre box that can display either a, um, a letter or a number, or a route indicator, sometimes known as a feather light or lunar, depending where in the country you are. And these indicators tell the driver what route your train is being signalled over. There's actually quite a lot to route knowledge. You've got um, preliminary route indicators, stepped banners, flashing aspects. I'm actually thinking about doing a video just on, uh, just on route indication and signalling, so if you think that would be useful, do let me know in the comments section below. So here's the scenario, and this is based on true life events, although some of the names and locations might have been changed just to protect the innocent, if you like. <laughs> so it's a Sunday evening, and I'm working the late shift. I book on about, about five o'clock, pick up my schedule card, make my way to the train. I get on the train, read my schedule card, and find out that due to the beloved weekend engineering works, my train is booked to take a different route to usual. I'm going to the same destination, but I'm, I'm diverted across a different route. It's a route that I'm familiar with. I've driven over this route several times before, but part of the route has recently been re-signalled, and I haven't driven over it that much since it was re-signalled. So, I get in my train, set off on time, everything's normal. I travel along my normal route, turn onto the diversionary route, no problems at all. Until that is, I approach a station in London. I won't mention the name of the station, but uh, there is a bridge that has the same name as the station, which probably narrows it down to about three or four stations, so you decide which one it was. So I'm approaching this station when I notice that the signal I'm expecting to take me, with the route indicator, that I'm expecting to take me off the diversionary route back onto my normal route, is displaying a green aspect proceeds straight ahead rather than uh, the junction indicator to take me back over my normal route. I was only traveling about 30 miles an hour at the time, so I stopped the train before the signal and used the radio to call the signalman to ask for instructions. This is my great radio impression now. Hello, Signal. This is the driver of one Zulu zero one at a stand at signal Tango Lima, or Tango Tango 222. Might have given away too much information there. I explained to the signal what had happened, that I was supposed to be going across at this junction to the normal route, and the signaller assured me that it was all okay, proceed up to the next signal, and I'd be taken onto the normal route at the next signal. Again, like I said, this area had been re-signalled recently. 
not a problem. So I followed the signal as instructions, sure enough, reached the next signal, went on to my normal route, proceeded to my destination, just in time, managed to get Burger King before it closed. Perfect. So having eaten a rather fatty and calorie intensive Burger King, we left London, heading back home, same route that we come on using the diversionary route. Everything good so far. So I'm driving along just south of uh, the London station that has a bridge of the same name, doing about 45 miles an hour when I notice the signal I'm expecting to take me onto the diversionary route is displaying a proceed straight ahead aspect. Now, like I said earlier, this area had been recently resignaled, and calling on my experience on my inward bound journey, I thought to myself, that's fine, there must be another signal further up that's going to take me over. So I continued, I took the road, I continued about 40 miles an hour, 45 miles an hour, continued straight down, got about a mile and a half, or about half a mile, sorry, and then realised that there is no other signal to take me onto the correct route. So I promptly stopped my train and made a rather embarrassed call to the signaler. I now have a train full of probably five, six hundred passengers and we're going the wrong way. So here we go, bad impression of signaler conversation again. Hello signaler, this is the driver of one Zulu zero two at Tango Tango 345 signal. I'm not sure I want to be here, over. <laughs> Signalman told me to wait where I was whilst the men in charge make decisions on what to do with my train. Carrying on forward wasn't an option, unfortunately, as the large section of the line was closed um, due to engineering work, so I couldn't reach my destination. So I'm now stuck, basically, with no other option but to reverse my train back to the signal that takes me onto the correct route and then proceed as normal. But that's not quite as easy as it sounds. So I know I get lots of viewers from overseas, so for those of you who may not be familiar um, with the UK Railway, the type of train I was driving is what's known as a multiple unit, so we have a driving cab um, at each end of the train. So it's not physically reversing as in backing up. You have to walk to the other end of the train where you have a driving cab and you can proceed forwards, although in the wrong direction. Now reversing a train isn't quite as simple as it sounds. A lot of railway lines, the majority of railway lines are signalled and designed for trains to travel in one direction. You have a, an upline and a downline. Trains are only meant to travel in one direction over them. There are certain lines known as reversible lines where trains do travel in either direction, but unfortunately, I wasn't so lucky in this, on this occasion. So now basically we've got to go the wrong way down a one-way street on the railway equivalent of the M6. It was a very busy location, very busy station that I was driving out of. So the first thing I have to do is make what's called the walk of shame. It's known amongst train drivers as the walk of shame, which is where you have to walk through a train full of passengers to the other end, to the other cab, who are all quite frustrated now because you've gone the wrong way. So you know you've done something wrong, they know you've done something wrong. So it's kind of a is a head down, walk through the train, just get to the other end as quickly as you possibly can. So like I said, we're now facing um, towards London again. I'm now ready to go back towards London. There are no signals in this direction on this line. So communication is absolutely vital as when to proceed, how far you can proceed, even what direction you're proceeding in. There are quite a few rules and regulations um, regarding wrong direction movements that I won't cover in this video, but if you do want to know more about those, then uh, social media channels is a great way to get in contact with me or the comments section below. So I made the movement by the, as the, under the signal as instructions, proceeded back along the line. I was quite lucky actually, there weren't any trains behind me blocking my way, which was, which was pure luck. So I made my way back to the signal, made the walk of shame once again to now the, the country facing cab, signal come off, proceeded along the correct route running about 40 minutes late. So yeah, not a great day um, for me that particular day. I've been driving for six or seven years on the main line now, and it's the first time that I've had an incident where, where I've gone the wrong way like that. But after any incident uh, like this one, there's always an investigation that follows. And the idea of the investigation is to find out what happened, how it happens, and to make sure it doesn't happen again. The railway are really good at not, not punishing people for doing things wrong. It's more about learning and taking the learning from it um, to make sure it doesn't, doesn't happen again. For me, I think the cause of this was my experience on the inward journey. I'd questioned the route on the inward journey. I was wrong. So I kind of made the assumption on the outward journey. Oh, well, the signaler knows what he's doing. Maybe he's right. That comes down to something called non-technical skills um, that I'll talk about in the next video. And also, like I said, the route had been recently re-signaled, so maybe my route knowledge um, wasn't as good as it, as it could have been. But one thing 
one thing you learn on the railway very, very quickly is, is to take the blame and to take responsibility for things when they are your fault. And I hear people screaming, you know, and I hear other drivers say it all the time, well, isn't it the signalman's fault for sending you the wrong way? Well, yes, it is the signalman's fault for sending you the wrong way, but at the end of the day, I was the train driver, I was the one that didn't stop and, and question his decision. So the, the blame is 50-50. But yeah, it's very important on the railway, if you do make a mistake, hold your hands up, say, look, I'm really sorry, this is what happened, and take responsibility for it. The moment you start lying and trying to get out of things, that's when, when companies are inclined to go, go through disciplinary proceedings. But uh, yeah, all the time you're honest, you learn from your mistakes, and everything's good. So I hope that's given you a, a little bit of an insight into something that happened to me, taking a wrong route and going the wrong way. It does happen on the railway occasionally. Uh, we probably get signalled down wrong routes more often than what we actually take them. So it probably happens where the signalman sent us the wrong way, but we stop and challenge it. But obviously in this, this situation, I didn't. Anyway, thinking back to my last video, you may remember that I asked you to identify what this, I don't know what side of the screen it's coming on, that side I think, what this sign here means. Loads of people got this one right. It means the commencement of an AWS gap which basically means AWS isn't provided. Normally found on the approach to terminal stations um, or on the approach to lines known as um, SIMBIDS lines, which is simplified bi-directional signaling. Again, if you want me to make a video on that, let me know in the comment section below. Anyway, here is the sign for this video. Can you tell me what, and I think it's this side, what this sign right here means? Answers in the comment section below, and I will reveal the correct answer in my next video, which will be focusing on how hard it is to drive a train. So if you want to see that and don't want to miss out on that, click the subscribe button, click the notification button, and don't forget to like this video as well. It really does help me out. So as always, guys, I want to say a huge thank you for watching this video. And if you have enjoyed it, then please do hit that subscribe button and like this video. As always, any comments, questions about this video or any questions about working on the railway, being a train driver, anything like that, you can contact me on my social media channels. They're at the bottom of the screen now or leave a comment in the comment section below. As people who question me and comment regularly will know, I do always try and reply to your comments. Once again, thank you for watching, guys. Hope to see you again soon. And remember, create, share, and inspire.